have you ever brought your camera on location, found yourself a beautiful view, pressed that shutter button, and then thinking to yourself that you bagged a shot, only to find out that the photo you took screams. Hello darkness, my old friend. But it's probably because your exposure isn't right. So in this video, <gasps> I got you. In technical terms, photography is just about collecting light, and the exposure is a fundamental concept, which is just the amount of light that your camera sensor picks up over a period of time. If you let in too much or too little light, this will make you lose a lot of details in your photo, which is why it's important to nail your exposure, just like your ex girl. <laughs> This is becoming too R18. <laughs> so to get this right, most modern cameras these days will provide you with some tools that you can refer to. So thank you, technology. I'm currently making my way to a coast here in Hong Kong to give you some examples of the tools that you can use for your exposure. And the first one is going to be on the exposure meter or the EV value, which is just a numerical representation of what your camera thinks is the correct exposure and set it to zero or the balance position, which is already a very good starting point. If you look at the back of my camera screen, there's going to be a sign that says plus minus, and this is going to be the exposure meter and it is currently set at zero. But if you're in auto mode or semi-auto mode, like aperture, priority and you disagree with this value you can adjust it using the EV dial and put it on the negative side to underexpose and then put it on the positive side if you want more exposure landscape photographers like things curvy so the next tool that we're going to talk about is about a curve called the histogram the histogram represents the luminosity values within the frame from the blacks to the whites with the blacks being represented on the left hand side of the graph and the whites being represented on the right hand side of the graph as you add more exposure, you shift the curve towards the right hand side as you make the highlights and the whites brighter. And vice versa, as you underexpose the image, it will shift the curve to the left as you make the shadows and the blacks darker. It doesn't really matter how high your graph is on the histogram, but what you really want to avoid is hitting the edges on the right or the left hand side, because this would mean that you're already clipping your whites or your blacks meaning that you're already losing too much details in those areas. So a common tip in landscape photography is to expose for the highlights and shift your histogram to the right while avoiding to hit the edges because it's much easier to retrieve the shadow details in post-processing than it is to retrieve the highlights. So what I'm doing right now is I'm going really low to the ground so that my wide angle lens can emphasize the cracks and the rocks in the foreground and then lead your eye towards the waves which I'm doing a bit of a long exposure to smoothen out the texture and then there's like the vast ocean at the background with a few boats and some landscapes at the back simple composition the waves weren't as strong as I'd hoped so after taking these two shots I decided to climb up the steep rocks thinking I better get subscribers from this I may have chosen the more challenging way to the next destination. Whew, that part was a struggle. Very steep. So the zebra is just a crossbreed of tigers and horses. I think this is the wrong script. So zebras are just stripe markers that already indicate that you are clipping your highlight and it's just basically your camera telling you you're adding too much exposure, it's time to f*** off. So just tone down your exposure a little bit and then you can find a zebra function within your menu system to turn it on and then you can set at which point you want the zebras to appear. So just take note that the zebra in the histogram function applies to the JPEG version of the image that you're trying to capture. So if you're shooting in RAW, you have a little bit of wiggle room because RAW will have a lot more detail than JPEG. So there is one more technique that I wanted to share, but before that I wanted to check out this spot that I've never been to, which looked interesting from what I gather from the internet, which is this abandoned small fortress at the edge of the coast where you can sort of have a frame looking from the inside and then you have the ocean and some islands at the background. Interesting hike. I found this framing quite interesting, but it does feel a bit lacking. So I decided to add myself and my pink shirt to have more color contrast. For the next exposure tip, I needed to go out on another day to give better examples, because for that one, I needed to have a view and scene like this to prove my point. <laughs> it's gonna be exciting. So let's go find ourselves a spot and set up the shot. Okay, pop quiz. 
What would you do if you set up your shot and then your histogram starts to look like this? Where if you add more exposure to show the shadow regions, it starts to clip your highlights. And vice versa, if you reduce the exposure for your highlights, you start to lose details in your shadows. Well, this is a special case where I suggest that you do some bracketing. Bracketing is just a photography technique where you take multiple exposures of the same composition. Taking an overexposed photo to capture the shadow regions, an underexposed photo to capture the highlights areas, and a normally exposed photo in the middle and blending them together later on in post-processing. Some cameras these days will already have this function built in under continuous bracketing modes, but if your camera doesn't have it, then you can always do this manually. I tend to use a three-shot bracket with a range of plus minus two stops in the EV meter in my photos. Personally, I don't think there's such a thing called correct exposure, but more like there's an appropriate one. But just make sure you're not caught with indecent exposure. Your final exposure value will depend on your artistic insight. For example, a slightly darker photo will bring a bit of a moody vibe in your image, while a slightly brighter image will give a bit more energy in the photo. So I think this is all very subjective. But what is important is that you are intentional with how you capture your exposure, and that you collect enough information to be able to post-process later on. Okay, so I finally made it to the top of this peak called the Devil's Peak here in Hong Kong. And if you watched my previous two vlogs, I didn't really have much luck in getting like a nice sunny weather for a sunset. And it was very, very gloomy and moody. <laughs> so the forecast today looks promising. So I just really had to go out again and take some nice sunset photos. Fingers crossed. I was very happy to finally see another vibrant sunset. And while there weren't enough high clouds for some dramatic shots, I'm pleased with what I have captured especially the ones taken after sundown during twilight and as the city lights started to turn on. Let me know in the comments below which photo you liked best. Now that you understand how to take photos with appropriate exposure, it's time to understand how you can take control of your own camera settings to make it even better. So click on this video where I explain to you the three variables that come into your camera's exposure and show you how each of those will affect how your photos look. So I'll see you there. Thanks for watching.